Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I have a lot of people send me questions and they'll send me a really short question and I'll give them a really short answer. And they'll say, no, no, no. I was thinking it would be a good topic for video. But I've also people send me questions. They just ask me questions and I look at it and go, that's a good topic for a video. <laughs> so Nick sent me an email. Thanks a lot. And this is a good one, by the way. He said, Steve, I really appreciate most of the videos you make. Thank you. This may be too Michigan specific for a video, but I'm very confused by the DNR's no ORVs signs posted in a state park. What is an ORV? And it's an interesting point, and he attached a photo of it, but these are, you'll see them all over the place. Uh, and there's a sign saying no ORVs, and then there's a little red circle with a line through it over what appears to be the silhouette of a guy riding like a ATV. He says, I know a quad or a dirt bike would normally be considered an off-road vehicle, but I've seen both plated for on-road use also. Conversely, I've seen Jeeps plastered with ORV stickers, and the sign does not say anything about just motor vehicles. So theoretically, the way this sign is drafted, can I drive my pickup truck down this road? Sign says no off-road vehicles, but my pickup truck's not an off-road vehicle. And so he's simply asking about the way the sign is phrased. What does it literally mean? What does it legally mean? And, and then where do we go from here? So interestingly, I, I guessed at this one. <laughs> because I know how the state of Michigan thinks. And I, and I said, you know something? I have a sneaky feeling that no ORVs means no vehicles at all. And simply taking a vehicle and putting it off-road makes it an off-road vehicle. And I know it sounds like a bootstrapped argument, but it doesn't make sense that you cannot ride ATVs or dirt bikes or any of those things, but you can drive a Humvee. That, that doesn't make any sense. And so I, I wrote him back and I said, I think, I think the fact that you take a vehicle off-road makes it an off-road vehicle. And so they're actually saying no vehicles of any type. But there's an explanation for that also. And then I looked it up before I hit send and found out I was right. So then I cut and paste the chunk and, and, and send it to him. I said, here, here you go. So Michigan's laws, you can find these online. The DNR publishes this stuff. And by the way, I know a lot of people complain about the regulations from the state. But Michigan does a very good job of making the regulations available in plain English. You can look the regulations up in those blue books and find the definition someplace of what an off-road vehicle is for the purposes of the state park system. But likewise, the DNR puts out a plain English book that explains it. Just the same way I mentioned before that the Michigan Bureau of Automotive Regulations, which now is called something else entirely, uh, put out a book called the Dealer Manual. And if you want to know what the laws are regarding auto dealerships, you can wade through those books or read the dealer manual where they've broken it all down into plain English. And again, it's available online for free. So there is a bunch of stuff online. And if you simply look up what is an off-road vehicle in Michigan, you'll find this pamphlet. And it says here, Michigan law defines an off-road vehicle as any motor vehicle that can be operated cross-country without benefit of a road or trail over land, snow, or other natural terrain. So if you can operate it off-road, it's an off-road vehicle. So I suppose that my Viper probably is not an off-road vehicle because it's got this much ground clearance. Although some people say, Steve, if you really put your foot into it, I bet you can get the Viper to go through a field. Probably, probably. But the point I was making originally that I guessed that was, yeah, pretty much anything that can be off-roaded is an off-road vehicle. And by you putting it there, you, in essence, made it one. But here is the deal. There are two different classifications in Michigan as to things you can do with an off-road vehicle in a state park. And keep in mind, these laws do not apply to private property. So if you've got 40 acres and you want to go bombing around back there, anything you want, including a Viper or a Corvette, knock yourself out. You can. Okay, we're talking about state parks, state land, that kind of thing. So there is a thing called an off-road vehicle license, an ORV license, and a trail permit. So you are going to need an ORV license to be using your vehicle off-road on state land, and you might need a trail permit for the location. 
Both the ORV license and the trail permit are valid for one year, which begins April 1 and ends March 31st. Okay? An ORV license is required to ride eligible county roads, frozen surface of public waters, state forest roads open to ORV use, and eligible national forest roads. So this can also apply in national forests, and we got a bunch of those here too. So it'll cost you $26.25. A license is not required to operate on private lands. Both the ORV license and the trail permit are valid for a year. An ORV trail permit is required when operating on state-designated ORV trails and scramble areas. That'll cost you 10 bucks. plus you'll also need the ORV license. So 36 bucks total. ORV trail permits are not valid as a standalone license. An ORV license must also be purchased. And a trail permit's not required in private lands. If you want to go on a particular kind of trail, you're going to need the trail permit. Okay? Uh, and the ORV license, you'll need that also. So here you go. It depends on where you're going and what type of vehicle you have. And there's actually a chart. It's almost like a graph with the axis and the axis. So the type of vehicle you have, for instance, can be a street licensed off-road vehicle. Can it be driven on designated ORV trails? Yes. But you will need both the trail license and the ORV license. Okay? Can you drive the street licensed ORV on a designated ORV route passable by a conventional two-wheel drive passenger vehicle? Yes, you can, and you don't need either of those two, the license or the permit. If you're going to drive your street licensed ORV on a designated ORV route not passable by a conventional two-wheel drive passenger vehicle and scramble area, you're going to need both, and so on. But the interesting thing is you go down to the very, very bottom and it goes, a street licensed truck or passenger vehicle. So it's simply a, a vehicle, like he said, that's just street licensed. Uh, and let's suppose you've got yourself a Ford pickup truck. A Ford pickup truck, it's got street plates on it. Can you drive it on a designated ORV trail uh, for vehicles 50 inches in width or less? Because that's one of the designations. And it is not permissible. You, with or without stickers, you can't do it. And so that's a trail that's designated for vehicles 50 inches in width or less. Uh, can you drive it on a designated ORV route passable by conventional two-wheel drive passenger vehicle? Uh, yes, you can, and you don't need either of those stickers because it's a designated ORV route, but it's passable by conventional two-wheel drive passenger vehicle. How about a designated ORV route not passable by a conventional two-wheel drive passenger vehicle in a scramble area? Then you need both the ORV and the trail, okay? <laughs> How about driving your street-licensed truck on a frozen surface of a public water? Uh, what do you need for that? Neither. Neither. So, in short answer to the question, can you drive your truck on an ORV trail? It depends on what kind of ORV trail it is, whether it's designated specifically for narrow vehicles or not. And if it's not, you can, so long as you have both of the stickers, the ORV license and the trail sticker. So it's quite complicated, but it's an interesting point because if you looked at the sign and tried to decipher it, it does appear to be saying, at least from a logic standpoint, that you cannot bring an off-road vehicle onto this trail. It doesn't say you can't bring a street vehicle on the trail. And so I would agree that the real issue here is it would be a clearer sign if it simply said no vehicles. No vehicles. No ORVs, no street legal, no nothing. No vehicles. And I've been on trails that would benefit from a designation like that, like a mountain bike trail. And I've ridden mountain bike trails that are this wide in spots, and you couldn't get a vehicle from one end to the other, even if it was like a game show and you offered a prize, without using chainsaws, okay? So you very well could put a sign that says no vehicles at all. 
I think they're probably getting at the idea that the average person will recognize that there's a trail off into the woods at a state park. Uh, it's probably not suitable for regular vehicles, and ORVs are prohibited. Uh, that seems kind of strange. But I will tell you that I've been riding the Potawatomi Trail near Pinckney, Michigan, out in the middle of the woods, and there's places where the trail crosses the road. And I know that trail really, really well. I know where the turns are, where the crossroads are, and all that stuff. And I remember coming around a corner, and there was somebody who had a four-wheel drive vehicle stuck. And they were coming the wrong way down a biking, hiking trail. And there were signs all over the place, you know, saying, you know, bike trail only, no vehicles, that kind of thing. And some knucklehead on a Sunday morning was just out taking a joyride with his buddies and had gotten his vehicle stuck. And when I'm out bike riding with people, we are often looking for adventures. And we've actually helped somebody. I told, this, I told the story on Vin Wiki about how we helped pull a Jeep out of a ditch. Um, but... We did not stop to help this guy because this guy had gone around signs basically telling him not to do what he had done. So how he got out of there, don't know, don't care. He wasn't there the next week when he drove by, <laughs> so he did manage to get his vehicle out. But, oh, it probably cost him some money. It certainly was embarrassing. So, Nick, thanks for the question. It was a good one. The question is, what is meant by the sign no ORVs? And, yeah, no off-road vehicles, but it really could be interpreted as simply no vehicles at all. And if you've got questions, check out the Michigan's DNR website. And I suspect that most states have similar information online regarding their own park system. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. The two enemies of human happiness are pain and boredom.